Hi, I'm Jacqueline Eckern, founder and president of Eating Disorder Hope. And today I want to talk to you about insurance reimbursement for eating disorder treatment. Unfortunately, a lot of families and individuals have had to struggle very hard to get insurance companies to pay for their treatment and in many cases have been denied coverage entirely. So this leaves people either um, desperate to take dramatic financial measures in order to pay for very expensive treatment or just foregoing the treatment and continuing to suffer with the eating disorder. And this is disheartening and discouraging for all of us and I do have some good news for you. Recently, a case was won um, in Maine against the insurance company Anthem, um, where Anthem had denied insurance coverage for treatment to a 12-year-old girl for her eating disorder. She, she was covered for the initial 20 days, and then they cut off the treatment, and the child was not ready to go home. So... Uh, Later, Cantor and Cantor was brought onto this case, and they were able to obtain full reimbursement for all of this young lady's care. And the way they did this is they found two errors in the judgment of Anthem's decision to not cover her treatment further than the 20 days. And the way they, what they came up with was this. Uh, they used, Anthem used deference or discretionary authority in the way they read through and applied the insurance policy to their benefit in order to not cover this young lady. And the court uh, deemed that it was inaccurate and that they would indeed have to cover it. So questioning any kind of discretionary authority that insurance companies are using in their decision making to deny coverage is a very empowering tool that you can take away from this case. And then the other issue was it was determined that Aetna, excuse me, Anthem used wrong criteria for judging her ability to be discharged after 20 days. And so Again, you can examine the criteria any insurance company is using to deny coverage to you and argue that back with them. It's still a long haul, but we do have mental health parity in effect. It went into effect in 2010. You can look up um, this information online, and here is a website that's helpful with that. But basically, mental health parity in a nutshell was put in place to ensure that insurance companies allowed equal coverage for mental health and substance use disorders equivalent to what they do for any other physical illnesses or ailments. So these three things that I'm sharing with you, uh, mental health parity law, the uh, deference argument when dealing with an attorney or discretionary authority, and then what were the criteria they used to deny the coverage are things that hopefully will be helpful to you if you find yourself in the unfortunate position of having to debate with your insurance company to get coverage. Thank you and hope this is helpful.